Well, it's been a while now since all this was taken apart. Everything's all cleaned and ready to go back together now. I managed to find some replacement parts for the missing LED and I'll show those later when I fit them on. So I think the first thing to do is to get these little key clip post things all back in. So that's all of them back in. Doesn't look like there's any missing, which is unusual. And just lift that up, make sure they're all, you can see they're all dropping in when I lift that up, so they're all seated properly. Next thing to do before putting the membrane back in is sorting out this um, caps lock LED over here. Uh, that's fairly simple, so we need one of our LEDs and one of these little rubbery things which hopefully you can see it's got a little hole through it. So how this works I can get this to focus. The legs go through these holes. Like so. And then that black material is conductive. That's why there's a split in the middle that's non-conductive, so otherwise the legs would be shorted together. So that then provides a path from the uh, flex of the well the the keyboard membrane uh, this contact here to the LED so that will be mounted in there like that and we just need to slide that so that's nice and flat in there tilt that a little bit I've got to be careful otherwise all the uh, key mounts will fall out, so you see how that just sticks up a bit and then when the back's screwed down onto that, that will provide pressure to keep contact from the membrane to the LED. So the next step is to put the membrane on, which is just a case of laying that on and lining it up. And then the metal plate can then drop on top of that hopefully we'll line up and then it's a matter of uh, getting some screws in so I'm going to start getting these screws in I'll probably start in the middle just to have a good start point make sure everything's lined up you don't want to over tighten these screws when you're doing them up there's no there's no real need I'm also only doing up every other screw because I just want to get enough screws in to be able to test this before I put the rest of them in because if there's any problems and I need to open it it's just going to make it easier to only have to undo half as many screws. Uh, the exception to that is um, this side over here where the caps LED is I am going to put an extra screw in there because that will help pull the plastic frame onto that LED make sure that there's contact there so that one's not very good that one's probably been over tightened in the past uh, if you need any of these um, caps lock key parts uh, I got these from eBay from a seller called Airy36 which is spelled A-I-R-E-Y-3-6 and the shop's called Amiga, Amiga Retro Experience there's so loads of different bits on there so I've got this spare keyboard controller here so I'm going to try that first just to make sure this one works and then I shall put the original one back on just got to clip this uh, cable tie off to get this on here I can remember how to do it I think the cable has to go under the metalwork and then this sits on the top, I think. 
and then that lines up with the plastic lugs and the holes here there's a, a lug there and another one there and then it's just a case of putting in the two screws into the plastic and then there's a, a machine screw that goes into the metal the metal work yeah it looks like there should be one in here as well I don't know if I took one out of there or not but I'm just going to try putting one in it does look a bit close to the traces but uh, I think there should be one in there as well um, now really I should have uh, put this plastic cover on first although this doesn't have one so I might pinch the, the plastic insulating cover for this board and then this this hole up here this is where the the bolt goes with the uh, flanged head that grounds this metal plate to this PCB here now I've just realized I've made a mistake because I'm thinking I can try this without putting the keys on but I can't because these are actually dropping onto the um, keyboard membrane and making contact and that's because there's no key and spring pulling these up so that they don't make contact uh, but they're all dropping against the PCB so it'll be like someone's pressing all the keys all at once which is not really going to be any use for testing so I've got to put all the keycaps and springs on first before I can go any further. Okay so I'm going to get the space bar on first because that's going to be uh, easier to do now. So first thing I'll I'll do is get this metal bar on and it, as with taking them off the best solution to to fit these rather than pushing this against this metal tab here and bending it which can risk the plastic then breaking and then you've basically had it the best thing to do is just slide these in from the side like that and then pull that across and then switch to the other side and then do the same again just push it across and then you can move that over like that then and it's fitted so that gets the bar in place the next issue is the the springs now it's actually best to put the key on to the metal bar first before you try getting the springs on because they just end up getting knocked out of the way so I'm going to hook this part of the metal strain bar into the slit on this plastic lug on this key here so just in case of getting that lined up on one side first difficult to show this on camera and then just pull that across and then the other side we just need to put a little bit of pressure on this metal bar here so I'm pulling that across to the right hand side slightly just to bend it a little bit and that just then clips in it's difficult to show this you need to get that that part to go through here if you try and get it over the side it's more difficult because these are wider than that part so just bend that and then let go and it will go in and that's locked in place now next then you can uh, get the springs in place and just sort of hook see how I've hooked that over there yeah if you try and just do it like that it's just going to keep getting knocked out of the way so the best thing is to just put a bit of a bend on it and get it to hook over and then the same with these well these are shorter so it's a little bit easier uh, my fingers are in the way and then it's just a matter of bringing that over and then it should click down and that will be the middle uh, post on the key and we've locked the key down you see now that's that's returning from all positions. If there's anything not quite right, you'll find if you press it down at one side, it'll it, the other side won't go down. So you can tell that's as it should be. And then it's the same process with all the other large keys. Again, I'm just wiping these these metal bits down just a bit because they do tend to. I think originally they they come with some sort of grease on them, but I'm not going to re-grease them. It just seems to attract more 
muck and crap to the key unfortunately. So this larger, next largest one, you've got the space bar which is the biggest and then there's one that's slightly bigger and then these are all the same size, they're slightly smaller than that one again. You see the, the width. When you're doing this I'd say just be patient because it is quite fiddly and this will fall out several times on your first attempts. So just, just be patient, don't force anything because you can break, break the clips. So again I'm just going to slide this bar across with these metal curls pointing upwards and then once it's across far enough for the other side to sit on the uh, post here you can then slide it back the other way. There'll be a little bit of tension doing that but not much. You're not putting as much bend on this clip here as you would be if you just tried to force it in and click it into place. Then if you swing that over that'll uh, stop it from coming back out again. And again this is a shift key we just want to hook this into that side and I'm just going to use a screwdriver to hold the other side and support it and that allows us to, to do that and then just put a little bit of pressure towards the right with the screwdriver to just put a bit of bend on that and then it'll lock in there you see like that and again with the springs put the spring on and then just bend it onto there so that it's it's not stood up straight, it's just on there and then when you push the key over, press it down firmly and that's in place now and you can, again, try pressing it at the far edges of the key just to make sure it's in place properly. So I'll do the rest of them and then pop all the rest of the key caps on. But it's definitely easier to do the bigger keys first while all the rest of the stuff's out of the way, you've got more access to, to the keys. Okay, so if I remember correctly, the other shift key doesn't have any plastic lugs under it for some reason. Uh, I assume it's meant to be like that. There's no lugs and there's not another one of these, so I can't fit that because it didn't come with one. And we'll move on to the tab key, which is this top one here. Now I'm going to slide this in from left to right this time because it's easier and then back again. Uh, it's just the same same technique again. Hook the metal bar on one side, use a screwdriver or something, bend the bar back and it's on. Once you've done it a couple of times, it's easier. And then again, put the spring on. Press both sides in the middle. Job done. Now uh, just a, a point here. When you sl obviously you slide slide one side on first, that's easy. You, you don't even need to slide it. You can just literally just put it under there like that. Then you need to get that level so this sits over here. But the further that this this is laid down, rather than upright, the easier it then is to slide it back the other way because this isn't pushing against that. The uh, metal bar isn't pushing against the clip. That just makes it a bit easier. Uh, where's the zero key? I'm doing that in the wrong order. Again, having the screwdriver holding this upwards makes it easier to hook the key on and then you've got the screwdriver in place to just pull the bar to the right slightly or the left if you're doing it the other way around and then hook the rest of the key on. And I've forgotten to put the spring on. You can tell because it's. Uh... So now it's just a case of uh, doing the rest of the keys, the smaller ones. Get some of the springs in place. You have to watch these because it's very easy, to, like that, to get two together and not realise that there's actually two springs there. Uh, and then you'll be wondering where it is, and if it's hidden under a key you're not going to find it. Can anyone spot the deliberate mistake?
Yes, a six looks like a nine, and a nine looks like a six when it's upside down. Everybody else just said it's out of all the cock ups in their videos. And now the question remains where's the missing spring? So it does appear I've lost a spring, but luckily, when these caps uh, LEDs were bought, they came with an extra spring, so hopefully that will do as a replacement. It should be the same. Yep, and there we go. I'm not actually sure if the keyboard's yellower than the yellow towel, I think it is. While I clean the keyboard, I also give this case in a bit of a clean up. It's still not brilliant, but it's a lot better than it was. I mean, obviously, scratches and things you're just not going to get out with the bit of water and soap. Uh, I've also used a bit of plastic from one of those, uh, they're like a plastic strip you use to, to bind sheets of A4 together. So I've put that on there just to stop any shorting on this metal plate. Although if I'm going to be putting this clear plastic protective layer on the back, then I guess that's perhaps not needed so much, but for testing this, it will be needed. Um, now see, I've cocked that up as well now. I've forgotten to plug the flex into the PCB. Uh, so I've got to unscrew the PCB again and then push that in. So we'll, we'll do that now. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this is pulled down like that. You see, you push it in, that locks it. If you put it right down, that's that means then when this goes, is pushed in to here, there's no resistance, which will prevent that from getting bent or snagged in any way. So I'm now going to uh, put that, try and tuck this into here. It's just a case of feeding that in and sort of sliding this up to it. Let's get in the way. I shouldn't have to put any force on that at all, it should just just go in gently. And then yeah, we're on the lugs there now. And a wire that's uh, preventing this from closing up. There we go. So that's all in now. I'm not going to lock that shut yet. First I'm going to get the screws back in on the back. Now that's back in place, this can be locked into position. So I'm just going to pull that up with my nails. You can use a screwdriver, just be careful not to catch the plastic here. And you, can, uh, you can just leave those, those up there a bit, just give each, each edge a, a bit of a gentle push. You've got to be careful you don't slip and then put a hole through that flex there because if you do that's it you're gonna have to replace the keyboard membrane. Uh, plug our keyboard connector in. Hopefully the right way around. See so someone's written back on here. Uh, it's actually uh, pretty easy to know which way to put this anyway. Uh, so if we look on here you can see you've got a gap in the middle there's a wire missing in the middle and you've got three pins on one side of that gap and there's your gap there and then four the other so as long as you've got the the wires the same four wires a gap and then three wires so it's easy to figure that out I've given this a test as best I can uh, from workbench really need to get some sort of software to do testing with really if I've got AMOS or something like that set up, I could uh, make a little, little program to check for keyboard scan codes and check all the keys. Uh, there were some keys that weren't working on this very well, or not at all in some cases, but they're all fine now, so I don't think there's any real problems. I think it was just a bit of dirt in there, needed cleaning. Um, obviously this PCB, the spare keyboard controller PCB has now been tested as well. 
I know that's okay, so I'm going to put the original back on, cable tie that back up, and obviously put this plastic um, insulating panel back on the back of this here. Well, it was on that one, but I'm going to pinch it for this. And then that can be kept as a spare, and I know it's, it's working at least, because uh, before I didn't know it hadn't been tested. So that's about it for this one. It's been a bit of a long-winded video, but unfortunately taking the keyboard apart, cleaning it and reassembling it, it does just take time. It's not difficult. It's just uh, time intensive. Uh, it's nice and clean now. The casing is a bit, a bit better as well. Uh, it's nice to be able to type on something that's not crusted up in somebody else's gunge, whatever that gunge may be. Uh, so on that note, I think we'll leave it there.